We honor you this morning. We bless you right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. We serve a powerful God. Hallelujah. Sing this song. There is power. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. For all who come, who run to him in faith, he is there. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. So fear no lie can stand against us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praises to you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. We magnify you, O God. We love you. We thank you for your your hand on our lives. We bless you right now. Praises to you, O God. We love you right now. Oh, God is good. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Believe God for powerful things. I want to tell you he answers prayer. Amen. We can call to him in the, in the, the morning time, the midday, the midnight hour. And our God, his ears are open to our cries. Amen. He's listening to help us. Amen. Answer our prayers. So let's ask God to move this morning. We want to pray for the area churches, pray for our mother church in Lake Havasu, Pastor Brady and Alicia Reyna. Amen. God's hand upon the Bullhead City Church, Pastor Louie and Teresa Lobato, Pastor Ken Haywood and Kingman, Joe and Annette Zebo Yuma, 
Pastor Gary Marsh in First Phoenix. Let's pray for the Valley Churches. God's grace and hand upon Blythe, Pastor Josh and Melanie Neal, Alex and Lily Cruz in El Centro, Jack and Jen Miller in Palmdale, Raymond Darnisha, Black Horse and Needles, and our area leader, Rich Cox, and uh, his wife, Brenda, in Redlands. Let's pray for Pastor Greg Mitchell, his wife, Lisa, as they lead our fellowship, God's grace upon them, and then missionaries, Pastor uh, Gordon and Mary Porter in Vintene, Lao. God's grace upon them, Pastor Alex and Karen Rangel in Atacipa, Peru, Bobby and Rosie Pinon in Zacapu, Mexico. God's hand to be upon our service here. We want to pray for Brawley, God, to move people's lives and hearts, God, to set the captives free, amen, bring deliverance uh, from sin, from bondage, uh, from the, destruc the destruction uh, that the enemy has upon people's lives. We want to see the, the, the captives set free, people delivered, amen. They come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So let's pray for them. Pray for our neighbors, our family, our friends, uh, people we know, amen, uh, around us and that we are friends with, going through many different things. We're praying for them. God's will to be done in their lives, whether that be them saved, whether they that be the, that the judge has grace upon them or whether that they be able to have a right mind, be delivered. They're able to get a job, uh, support themselves and their own family. We're praying God would help people, couples that need to get married and make things right before God. God's grace would be upon them. We're contending for all these things, uh, healing and deliverance as well. And we're asking you to pray and believe God for these needs as well. Let's pray together. Ask God's blessing upon everyone here and those absent from us that we have a relationship with. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We're asking your grace be upon our entire fellowship. Pour out your spirit. Let there be revival, Lord God. Oh, Lord, do it again, Lord. You did it in the 70s and years past, oh God, to Zusa Street, to many other revivals. We're praying for the great awakening yet again, Jesus People Movement yet again. God, pour out your spirit, save the lost, uh, those bound in sin, bring deliverance, hope, and change. Uh, God, move in people's lives, those we have friendship and relationship with uh, around us. We're praying for them, healing, deliverance, uh, your grace upon them, change uh, will come to their lives. We're praying, bless Pastor Greg, leads our fellowship, move powerfully and help. And we're contending for the Holy Ghost, Lord God, in our service, you speak to us and help us today. Oh, God, we love you. We give you grace and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise again. Hallelujah. We, oh, God, we honor you. Oh, God, we lift you. Oh, God, uh, we are grateful for your grace and your love. Oh, God, we magnify you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and turn and welcome everyone out to the service this morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, you can have your seat this morning. I just want to uh, welcome everybody out to our morning service. Hallelujah. God is good. We do have uh, Sunday morning services. Well, Sunday services here at the Senior Center, uh, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and also Sunday night at 6.30. I want to, uh, so that's every Sunday we're here. And so I want to invite you to tonight's service. We're doing a uh, Bible study on faith to change your world. Amen. Faith is the most powerful thing in the universe if you put your faith in the right place. Amen. Don't put your faith in something dead. Amen. Put your faith in something that is alive, uh, which is the word of God, which is God himself. And I want to tell you, your whole world can change uh, by faith in God. And so come with us. Come join us tonight, amen, for that Bible study, 6.30 on Sunday nights, and we'll be going for a number of weeks with that Bible study. We also have Wednesday night Bible study slash service at our house on Wednesdays at 7, 650 North Imperial, apartment 35. All are welcome. We study the Bible, amen, and then we have a time of fellowship, refreshments, uh, play some games, and just hang out, amen. So, God bless you. You're welcome to come join us.
in those things. And then Tuesday night, we'll have outreach, and also Saturday morning, we'll have outreach. Tuesday night, 6, amen, and then Saturday morning at 10, we'll meet and go out, tell people about Jesus, get some people saved. I want to go ahead and take an offering this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a popular saying in out in just society that money is the root of all evil, um, but that is not the what the Bible says. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of sayings that people have. You know, godliness is cleanliness is next to godliness. You know, this it's in the Bible somewhere. You know, a chicken. If you uh, put it in the, I mean. People have all kinds of ideas about what the Bible says, but that's not exactly what it says about money. It says in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I read about a, uh, a woman who had taken care of her mother for as she's getting up in age and so she's you know hidden up into the 80s so her her she took care of her mother for 25 years and one day she walks in on on her mother and her brother her brother is trying to get the mother to write him a check for all of her savings her life savings all of the inheritance just to write it over to him. And she was about to do that. And you can only imagine, here comes a sister, and it's like, what are, you, what are you doing? You're going to break up relationships. You're going to cause people to be angry with you. You're going to, to, to do all these things, disappoint your mother as well, and all because of greed. I want to tell you, man, if you don't have the right attitude and heart about money, it's going to, to uh, you know, the Bible says it, it's the root of all kinds of evil. Because people love money, they'll, they'll cheat uh, people, they will rob and steal. Because people love money, they will sell uh, drugs. I saw an interview with a, a guy, a, a drug dealer who's selling fentanyl. And the reporter is like, you know what, it, uh, you know, if I take that, it'll kill me, huh? And he's like, yeah, it'll, it'll kill you. Yes, it will. And the, the drug deal, you know, the reporter asked him, would you sell it to me? He's like, yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, I, I still will. Well, why? He's like, I got to eat. I got to pay my bills. <laughs> I don't care. Man, I'm just trying to make money. I want to tell you, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So when it comes to giving and offering, this is how you're going to break that spirit and realize the way God wants us to approach money. It's a tool. It's a blessing. With it, we can bless people. We can help. We can build a church. We can see God do powerful things. And this is why God wants us to be givers, among other reasons. So I encourage you to give this morning. Break up the love of money, hallelujah, love God more, amen, he's the one who can bless your life and help you, so I encourage you to give this morning your tithes and offerings, you can make a check just to the potter's house, amen, and we will make sure that goes to the right place, you can also give online at uh, the potter's house, on the tithely app, potter's house of Brawley, amen, and so that's a blessing as well. God bless you as you give. Our brother Albert's going to pray over the offering. Amen. God bless you this morning. You give. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, you could turn to Matthew chapter uh, six, 16. I'm, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We've been doing a study on the, the secret place. Hallelujah. The secret, your secret relationship with God. Amen. 
God wants us to to be people of prayer, people who pray. Hallelujah. Oh, the battery's dead. Okay. <laughs> God wants us to be people of prayer. So he says, pray in secret. You know, you, you, you have a, a place set aside where you can meet with God in secret. And the Bible says he will reward you openly. We talked about giving. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You don't have to sound the trumpet on the street corner when you give to somebody or you show mercy to people. You don't have to toot your own horn and post it all over Facebook or TikTok or whatever just so people will pat you on the back and or give you more likes <laughs> and clicks. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to do all that. God says, you know, if that's what you want, that's your reward. I mean, you know what? I want more than just a click. Hallelujah. I want the blessing that God gives. And so there's a secret relationship you and I can have with God that shows up in the open uh, areas of our life, in our relationships, in our finances, in our, in our, our destiny even. And so today... Amen. As we finish up this study, we're talking about fasting in secret. As Jesus is preaching on the Sermon, the sermon on the Mount, he's laying this out and he's saying, you know, this is how a Christian lives. When you pray, meaning you should be a person of prayer. When you give, meaning you should, if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you should be a giver. And then he also says this, when you fast, you need to do these certain things that we're going to look at this morning. I'm going to preach a sermon just simply entitled Fasting in Secret out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. It says this, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely, I say to you, they have their reward. That's all they're going to get. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So do you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. Fasting in secret. Filling water everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. When was the last time you fasted? When was the last time you skipped a meal and said, you know what? There's things that are more important than a meal. The last time you said, you know what, I need to spend more time with God, so I'm going to skip a meal. Amen. Maybe you've never fasted. Maybe you have. Maybe you've tried and, and, and you feel like you've failed. Amen. There's no, you know, when it comes to fasting, this is between you and God. So if you can do a meal, do a meal. <laughs> God receives that. If you can do all day or three days or you can go, you know, a week, however long you can go. You do that, amen. I believe God receives that, amen, as you put in the effort. So let's talk about why fasting. Jesus lays out many things that a Christian should do, as I mentioned earlier, prayer, giving, amen, having a, a, a devotional life, reading the word of God, getting to know God, hallelujah, amen, a Christian is a follower of Christ. That means we're a disciple. That means we are a learner. Amen. You, you remember the whole story of the karate kid, uh, Mr. Miyagi. Amen. You know, the, the karate kid went to Mr. Miyagi to learn. Oh, he would go every day. And he's doing the whole wax on, wax off thing. Amen. Jesus is saying, you know, you're, for the Christian, you're wax on, wax off. Prayer and fasting and giving and, 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 and tithing and, 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 and knowing who the word of God is and what the word of God is, what God says, that's our responsibility. That should be as simple as the way we breathe, amen, as equal as breathing to the Christian. These are, these are, this is a lifestyle that we are supposed to be living. 
Don't tell me you're following God and you don't pray. Don't tell me you're fo- you're a follower of Jesus and you don't read your Bible or you don't uh, you know you don't give all. Jesus said, follow me. What he means is do what I do, live as I live. These are things that should be a part of our walk with God. You need to learn how to give. You need to learn how to exercise faith in tithing and giving and being a witness, telling others about Jesus. You need to learn how to pray. I've, I've, I've talked to many, many people and I'm like, you know what, you know, I'll pray with you right now. And they're like, I don't know how to pray. And that's, that's, that's a, a very common thing. You know, we don't know how to talk to God. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can learn how to talk to God. You can learn how to have a relationship with him. Amen. And you can, you can even learn how to read the word of God. I thank God for, uh, you know, Crystal. She says, I can't understand the the King James or New King James, but I can understand the English version, English standard, standard version, and I want to tell you that's all that matters. God wants you to understand what he is saying, and if you need a, a version like the English, you know, go for it. Fasting is to be a part of your walk with God. How much you fast, that's between you and God. Every six months, our fellowship, we have a three-day fast. But I want to tell you that as a Christian, you, you need to fast more than that. <laughs> you, you only have problems every six months? <laughs> you only have something to fast about every six months? No, no, no. I want to tell you, you and I, we need uh, to fast a little bit more than that. You work that out with God. The bottom line is that you and I, we need to have this habit um, of fasting, amen. Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast. He's saying, do these things, amen. And then he also says there's some things we should not do. One of the things he says we should be doing is fasting. Jesus fasted, amen. So what is fasting this morning? Fasting is abstaining from food, uh, or other things for a certain time so you can give more time to God in prayer, in worship, in devotions, uh, in seeking the Lord. Fasting is a practice found throughout Scripture. A fast in the Bible is usually a voluntary, total abstinence from food for a set time for the purpose of devoting oneself to seeking God. Fasting denies our flesh what it wants. Uh, so we can focus more clearly on strengthening our spirits. We're denying something here down physically so we can seek something spiritually. We're letting go, setting aside the denying our flesh and saying, God, I need my spirit to be strengthened. I need to get in contact with you more. So I am going to do away with food for a certain amount of time. I want to tell you, if you just go without eating, but you don't read your Bible or seek God, then you're just dieting. You're just starving yourself. <laughs> you're just, you, you know, there's a difference between fasting, dieting, and starving yourself. People starve because they just can't get any food. People diet because they want to lose weight. So they say, I'm, I'm not going to eat as much. I'm going to count my calories. I'm going, you know, those are different. What fasting means I'm setting this stuff aside. I might not need to lose weight or whatever. Uh, uh, you know, I got all kinds of food, but I'm going to push it to the side because I want to seek the Lord. Amen. I'm going to spend that time in the word of God. I'm going to spend that time in prayer. Why should we fast? What's the purpose of it? There's many reasons. One is for spiritual strength, for a new endeavor. Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights right before he started his public ministry. I want to tell you, if you're going to step into something new, God has a new endeavor for you. There's, there's a new a chapter in your life. You, you need to fast. 
You need to ask God for wisdom and direction. Jesus was fasting before he chose his disciples. Maybe you have some decisions that you're going to make. Where am I going to go to school, college, or where, who am I going to marry, or, or, or where am I going to minister, or what uh, does God have for me, or my future? You, you have these, these uh, even uh, business issues. You have these things that you and I, we need to be fasting over. Big decisions, life-changing decisions. Somebody said when you, you reach new levels in God, there's new devils. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil was right there tempting him. So whatever new thing God has for you, you're stepping into ministry. There's going to be an assault. There's going to be a, a fighting against what, you, what God wants you to do. You and I, we need strength to overcome that. We fast for spiritual answers. I mean, you know, God's smarter than we are. (laughs) We can ask him for wisdom. We can ask him for understanding life in life when we we don't know the answers, the decisions we need to make um, or or how to do things that we need to do. Uh, Amen. We can go to God and ask him, and the Bible says he will give us answers. Oh, if you read about Daniel, this man, he's fasting for three weeks, 21 days he's fasting for answers From God, and the Bible says um, that there was angels and principalities of darkness that were fighting against his answer coming to him. They were fighting against the, from the day he started praying, God sent the answer. But there is an enemy fighting against that because you know why? The enemy doesn't want you to have understanding. He doesn't want you, amen, to have the answers you need. One of the ways the devil hurts many people is by keeping knowledge and understanding from them. You don't understand what sin is, and you're just living in it. You don't understand how these things are destroying your life, your, what you believe and what you say, uh, how powerful your words are. I want to tell you, you can curse your life. You can curse your children. You can curse your future and destiny. You wonder why you're always struggling. It's maybe, maybe it's because you don't understand how powerful your words are. Hosea 4.6, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You need to fast for understanding. You need to fast for wisdom. You need to fast for, to know how to be a good mother, a good father, a good parent, a, and a good minister of the gospel, what to say, a good witness, a good soul winner. You need to fast. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. And if you're not winning souls, you need some wisdom. Ask God. God, do something in me. I need you. God has the answers you need in life. What you don't know really can hurt you. In 2007, there was a mother... Uh, this woman, she's a mother of three. Her name was Jennifer Strange. She died after uh, winning a water drinking contest. This radio, you know, local radio station put on a water drinking contest to win a prize. Whoever could drink the most water without going to the bathroom uh, would win the prize. She won. She drank all this water and won. On the way home, uh, Huge migraine headache. She's crying. And I'll tell you, a few hours later, she's, she passed away from water intoxication. Acute water intoxication. And her family was awarded $16 million because they sued the radio and, and all of this. But I want to tell you, if the radio station people who put on this contest would have known you can die from drinking too much water. They would have never done it. But how many of you know that? I didn't know that. My people perish for lack of knowledge. How many more other things do we not know that are destroying our lives? I want to tell you, God knows. He can speak into our lives and help us. You seek him, you will find him. Fasting helps you gain spiritual knowledge. So we can win in life. Fasting helps uh, 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 
it's uh, for God's will. You ask for God's will to be done in your life. What does God want you to do? Where does he want you to live? What does he, what kind of ministry does he have, have for you? Amen. Uh, or uh, who, who, who to marry or where to live or what, even what uh, uh, job or occupation to pursue. God can help you make those decisions. Amen. God's will is for you and I to overcome sin. In Isaiah, God talks about fasting. He says, Isaiah 58, he says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, uh, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? I don't know if you're struggling with some sin some sin or some temptation, uh, something, uh, you know, maybe it's smoking, smoking cigarettes. I can't get free from, well, maybe it's drinking uh, or, or whatever it is, uh, your pill popper, uh, amen, or you have a porn addiction. Uh, I want to tell you, Jesus says, uh, the word of God says there's some things uh, that can only be broken by fasting and prayer. And maybe you need to get along with God and cry out to God until you are set free. He says, this type of fast breaks the bonds of wickedness. Hallelujah. This type of fast lifts heavy burdens. Sometimes people carry unforgiveness because of things that have happened in their life. I want to tell you, that's a heavy burden to carry. Whether it's um, you're not forgiving yourself or there's people that have violated you or violated your loved ones or whatever has happened, uh, amen, people have ripped you off, uh, stabbed you in the back, uh, and you're carrying this, and it's like, oh, God. You're telling me to forgive? That's a hard thing to do. I'm going to tell you, man. God can help you. God can help you. Sometimes you got to fast through till you get a breakthrough. Fasting helps you gain victory over sin, over hell, over the devil. You can have victory. You can have self-control. You can get the victory. Amen. And you can have a closeness with God. Isaiah 58, 9. Then you shall call. The Lord will answer. You shall cry. He will say, here I am. I want to tell you, fasting removes things from our life that are blocking our relationship with God. Talk about failing at, at fasting. Jesus says, he lays out how you can waste your time when you're fasting. <laughs> Verse 16, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. You're going to put your sad face on, stick out your bottom lip, with your droopy eyes. What's wrong with you, man? Just going through it, man. You know, man. I'm just fasting. <laughs> just fasting, man. Jesus says, you have your reward. And people are, oh, mijo. <laughs> you, you, that, that's your reward. It's like it, uh, when people see your fast, your, your, your sad face, and they want to help you. Uh, I want to tell you, that can be manipulative, and, 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 and kids are really, really good at this. You know, you, you take their toy or you won't let them have a piece of candy and it's <laughs> the lip is sticking out and, <laughs> and they want you to hear them. And <laughs> Jesus says, don't do that. Don't disfigure your face and put on this sad countenance and try to manipulate people or draw attention to yourself in hopes that somebody will, 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 will help you. Drawing attention to your problems. People, people are going to ask you, what's wrong? What's going on, man? And then you, you begin to vomit all your problems. Oh, man, I can't pay my bill. Me and my wife are arguing and the kids are, you know, this is going on and that's going on and I can't figure out this and I got this pain in my back, man, and I can't, I'm, you know, smoking these cancer sticks and I can't get free, man. It's just like, oh, man.
I want to tell you, man, when you do that, you're putting all the focus on you and your problems instead of God. And I also want to tell you that a lot of people don't want to hear all your <laughs> mess. Every time you come around, it's like, hey, how's it going? Oh, man. <laughs> Going through it. it in, after a while, people don't they don't want to ask you no more because they know you're just gonna vomit on them all your problems and all your issues. Uh, amen. But out of love, we keep telling them, Amen. Just give it to God. <laughs> keep giving it to Jesus. He's gonna help you. Hallelujah. You know what? There's things that people can help you with. There's some things people can help you with, but I want to tell you, uh, there's other things that only God can help you with. Only God can change your heart, man. heal things, deep wounds. Only God can deliver you from strongholds in your life and generational curses. I want to tell you, sometimes uh, to break these things, you need to lay hold of God uh, Stop getting the focus all on you and having your face all messed up and, and let God work. Amen. It's hypocritical, Jesus says. It's hypocritical because you're supposed to be asking God for the answer, but when you are disfiguring your face and, and, and moping around, you're asking for people to give you attention and people to get involved to help you instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to, uh, wash my face. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to look normal uh, while behind the scenes, it's me and God. We're going to wrestle this out. Uh, I'm going to win this victory. Uh, hallelujah. But you know what? When you're all this mopey, sad, people are going to try to help you. Oh, here, man, here's five bucks. Maybe this can help you. Or here's my advice for you. Uh, and, and, and it becomes all this thing of people helping you rather than you saying, no, God is going to help me. It's hypocritical. You're fasting for God to help, but you're putting on this show so people will help. So which, which is it? Are you trusting God or are you trusting people? I mean, you know, God can answer your prayer better than any human can. Another reason we fail at fasting is because we fast for selfish reasons. Isaiah 58, 3, we fasted before you, they say, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice. You're talking to God. I will tell you why I respond. It's because you're fasting to, to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? God says you're fasting, but you're not trying to change. You're fasting, but you're abusing people. You're still spewing out foul words and, and, and unbelief and cursing, and you're still fighting and carrying on instead, instead of trying to change. God lays it out here in Isaiah, and he says, you know, fasting is about God and other people. What it's about is, God, you know what, I need to get closer to you so I can be changed, so I can be a blessing to other people. I need to get closer to you so I can be changed, so I can be a blessing to other people. I can be a better husband, a better father, a better pastor. I can be a better business person or whatever it is. I can be a better mother. I can be a better worker. I can be a better brother or sister, and, and, and rather than just keep to myself, I'm willing and able to help other people. What are the greatest two commandments? Love God. And love your neighbor as yourself. God says as long as you're treating people bad, you can fast all you want. It's not going to do you any good. You're failing at fasting. Fasting and prayer should change how you treat God and how you treat other people. If that's not helping, then you're, fast, you're failing at it. As I close, the fasting in secret, the fasting, the fasting that God blesses, Jesus lays it out for us. Fast in secret. Fix your face. <laughs> and let God move. Amen. And God will reward that openly. 
Keep it between you and the Lord. I want to tell you, God wants to be the miracle worker in your life. He wants the one. He wants to be the one that gets the glory. Not Uncle Joe. Not, you know, your brother or sister. And they're bailing you out all the time and this and that. No, 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 no. God wants to get the glory. And, and, and that produces a witness and a testimony that you can stand and say, you know what? I got a hold of God and he set me free. I got a hold of God. And he turned everything around. I got a hold of God. Amen. I, 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 I skipped some meals. I prayed. And I, I, I got a hold of God. And he set me free. He changed me. He changed my life. He changed my circumstance. He changed my family, my ministry. And whatever it is, I want to tell you, then there's a witness. You can encourage other people. Get a hold of God. You will have power with God and with men. You make fasting a part of your life. And as I said, you know what? How much you fast or when you fast, that's between you and God. You work that out. I want to challenge you. If you have some some long-standing struggles, you have some long-standing issues of, of, of not being healed, you have some long-standing uh, issues, mind battles, ha hassles, unbelief, um, amen, uh, or, 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 or some, some struggle you have going on, I encourage you to give it to God and begin to fast and pray and see what God will do in your life. See what God will do in your home, with your family. See what God will do in your finances. See what God will do with your future and destiny, amen. I, you know what? When I gave my heart to Christ, I was going through all this mess at work, but when I got a hold of God, everything changed. The whole atmosphere at work changed. Amen. Other times in my life, I'm crying out to God for deliverance and change. I see generational curses working in me. I want to be free, and I'm crying out to God, and boom, something broke within me. I want to tell you forever change. You and I, we can lay hold of God, and we can, we can see heaven come down. The disciples were praying for a, a young boy, couldn't cast out this demon. Jesus comes and casts it out. The disciples ask, why couldn't we cast it out? Jesus says, some of these don't go out but by prayer and fasting. So prayer works. He says, some, some are going to go out by prayer. You're going to pray, and, and God's going to move, boom, and things are going to change. But he's like, some are bigger and better, and you need more power and strength and, and the lay hold of God more to see a change. And I encourage you this morning, fast and pray. Lay hold of God for the issues in your life. Amen. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, the presence of God this morning. God is good. The secret place, your secret relationship with God. God wants to help you this morning. He wants to bring change into your life and save you. Amen. And that's even a secret thing. How do you know somebody is saved? How do you know somebody is set free? How do you know that somebody has Jesus in their heart? You can't see it. But Jesus, you know what? You can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. You can see the effect of Jesus on a life, on a heart, on a person. When they're saved, there's a difference in their countenance. There's a difference in their attitude and their mindset. Even a joy that's unspeakable. It's like you can't explain it, but I just know there's a witness in my heart that I'm right with God. I'm clean. I'm not walking around in shame anymore. I'm not walking around in guilt anymore because I've given everything to Jesus and he set me free. This morning, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He went to the cross so that you could be set free from sin. You don't have to carry around that game, that, that, the shame and the guilt that you've been carrying around. God wants to help you this morning. The choice is yours. He wants to save you from your sin and the consequences of sin, which is eternal death and separation from God. This morning, 
We love you. God loves you. And he wants you to be right. If you're not right, lift your hand. Let's pray. Let's get right with God this morning. Lift your hand in this place. God wants to save you and set you free. You want it all. You want to pray, make things right with Jesus. He wants to change and save you. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants to set you free. Oh, God, I've got a future and a hope for you. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe you're backsliding, you've prayed before, and you know today you're not right with God. Come back to Jesus. So if you're unsaved or backsliding, you want to get right, lift your hand this morning. We want to pray with you in this place. God's here to save. God's here to heal. God's here to deliver. Amen. I'm going to call, change the call for a minute here. To the church, I encourage you, if you haven't fasted in the last year, <laughs> begin to fast once a week, a couple times a month or something, and you know, we need God in our church. We need to fat. We need a building. And there's people in places and in power, and we need God to give us favor with these things. Fast and help me fast and pray for these things. We need breakthrough. We need to see people saved and healed, families restored. God wants to rebuild his church in Brawley. Amen. And there is an enemy that fights against that. Help me fast and pray for breakthrough. Let's let's win this in Jesus. Amen. Let's stand this morning. We're going to sing a song of worship. This altar is open. You can come and pray. I encourage you to come. Make a commitment to God. I'm going to fast and pray more. I'm going to seek you more. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah, this altar is open. You can come, sit, pray, and get a hold of God. Kneel down, lay hold of God. Speak to him this morning. God, I make a commitment. I'm going to seek you more. I'm going to fast for some things. I'm going to help my pastor in this ministry for breakthrough. We're going to see people saved. We're going to see people healed. We're going to see marriages and couples getting things right and young people saved. Oh, God, we contend right now. There is power. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it out this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Power in his name. Oh, yes, So fear no lie can stand against us. He is me. The word has come to silence every
God, we worship you, Glory to you, my God, we bless you right now. We honor you. You are worthy of all the praise, all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I, um, we're going to be dismissed. Amen. I encourage you to come tonight. We're continuing our study, Faith to Change Your World. Amen. We're going to be talking about faith for the offering, believing God, and understanding how we give in faith. And so I encourage you to come 530 prayer, 630 our evening service will start. Amen. God is good. Let's pray and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We love you. We give you all the praise. Amen. Go with us. Amen. And help us be blessed this day. Bring us back tonight rejoicing in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning.